As a Bitcoiner, I fully believe in the technology and agree with many who say Bitcoin is the greatest thing ever created by human beings. Bitcoin is hope. Bitcoin is freedom. Bitcoin is for the people. On this channel, I've published multiple educational videos on Bitcoin and blockchain tech. But there is one important topic I haven't covered yet. Something that really matters. Something the community needs to address ASAP. The potential threat from quantum computers. There are a lot of misconceptions and inaccurate takes on this threat. At the same time, there are plenty of informative videos out there, but most of them are made by nerds for nerds, and the average person can digest them. That's why I decided to create a series dedicated to the quantum computer threat and the upcoming Q day. And in today's video, we'll start with the basics. Bits versus qubits. I'll compare both in the simplest way possible so anyone can understand. With that being said, let's dive in. Let's begin with what we know, classical computers. They use bits. A bit is either a zero or a one. Think of it like a light switch. Off is zero, on is one. For example, in binary, the number two is written as one zero. The number 23 is one zero one one one. The word crypto snake in binary using ASCII encoding looks like this. So every photo, song or app on your phone is built from billions of ones and zeros. And here's a key point. Bits have no probabilities. A bit is always 100% zero or 100% one, nothing in between. So whether you're streaming music, taking selfies or playing games, it's all powered by billions of bits, simple zeros and ones. Now let's talk about quantum computers. Instead of bits, they use qubits. Qubits are unique because they can exist in superposition, which means they are not locked as zero or one, but in a state that represents both, described by probabilities, technically from complex numbers called amplitudes, but think of it as chances. For example, a qubit might be 80% likely to be zero and 20% likely to be one, or 15% likely to be zero and 85% likely to be one. You got it. When you measure a qubit, it collapses into one solid answer, either zero or one. How does measurement work? Since qubits work with probabilities, engineers often run the same task multiple times, sometimes hundreds or more, depending on the algorithm and hardware, to confirm the result. Each run, the qubit system collapses to a single answer, and they choose the answer that appears most often. For example, imagine a simple quantum program designed to output the binary for 23 which is 10111. Let's say we run the program a hundred times. The results might look like this. 10111 appears 85 times, 10110 appears seven times, 00111 appears five times, other random answers appear three times. Since 10111 shows up 85% of the time, that's the result we trust. That's how we read qubits. Run the process many times and take the most likely result as the correct answer. Now let's make this concrete with an example. This is just a simplified thought experiment to show the difference in scale, not a real benchmark. Imagine we're trying to hack a four-digit pin. For simplicity, assume each try takes one second. Real hardware speeds vary and real quantum machines need error correction, so treat these numbers as illustrative only. A classical computer tries pins one by one. There are 10,000 possibilities. So in the worst case scenario, it would take a classical computer 10,000 seconds to find the right pin. On average, it would take about 5,000 seconds, roughly one hour, 23 minutes. A quantum computer uses superposition and a special search method called Grover's algorithm. So instead of checking one pin at a time, it amplifies the probability of the correct answer. The number of steps scales with the square root of the options. For 10,000 possibilities, that's about 100 steps. So at one second per step, the quantum approach would hack the same pin in just 100 seconds, which is a couple of minutes. Again, the stopwatch numbers in this example are illustrative, as the actual times depend on hardware, noise and error correction. So what's the big difference between bits and qubits? Classical computers process one answer at a time. Quantum computers don't check every answer one by one. Instead, they set up all possibilities in superposition, then use algorithms to zoom in on the right one. The more qubits a quantum computer has, the more complex problems it can tackle. This is probably the simplest way to explain it. If you want deeper details on bits and qubits, there are plenty of videos out there. My goal is to keep it clear and straightforward for beginners. And that's it for today. Thanks for watching this video. As always, check out the Crypto Snake Deals page for the best discounts on crypto gear and conference tickets. And don't forget to subscribe.
I'll catch you later. Repetitive when it comes to the grind. Study the details, every number on the line. Divide and multiply. I take pride to this routine forever at the same time. Then I feel like I'm just chasing blind. Can't explain the blueprint, still see the design. From the shape of the waves, this life gave us signs. Sacred geometry, read between the lines.